Hi, in this video, we'll discuss about uh, the plug and play app on the APKM. Uh, plug and play app is uh, again an uh, inbuilt app uh, when you install the APKM. So let's uh, quickly get into the APKM dashboard. Uh, once you log in, you will see this is the dashboard, and this dashboard gets populated as and when we identify or discover new devices as part of PNP. The project dashboard is basically uh, to categorize uh, the different devices that's going disc to get discovered from PNP, and then you can uh, allocate them to a sort of a different projects for easy identification. So let's uh, go ahead and uh, create uh, two projects. So one named BR1 and I'll just create it and the second name BR2. Okay, so I've created uh, two projects uh, 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 in the APK map. Uh, the unplanned devices is basically whenever a uh, device comes up as part of the PNP, it will uh, it will be shown here. Um, and you can basically claim it or ignore it or delete the device. The images is basically a repository of all the images that we want to upload. Uh, and uh, um, as you can see, I have already uploaded one uh, image uh, onto the system. Uh, PNP also helps you whenever a, a device comes up, you can actually push a new iOS onto the device and uh, those iOS needs to be present in this uh, uh, tab. The configurations are basically uh, the configurations on the devices. So as part of the PNP, you can push certain configurations onto the PNP. Um, so let's quickly go and add one of the configurations. So I have a, uh, I have a set configuration already available. Uh, uh, so the, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, so this is the configuration. So whenever a device comes up, so I'm going to configure some basic stuff uh, as such as host names, uh, the username passwords, and I'm going to basically give uh, an IP uh, uh, to one of the interfaces as well. Okay. And then I'm going to uh, save the configurations. So let's go ahead and quickly upload the configuration. It's there in the desktop. PNP one. I've gone upload. Uh, bulk import is basically where you can actually create a CSV file and uh, upload uh, all the device details uh, in bulk. So let's go to quickly the dashboard. Uh, uh, as soon as I define the projects, uh, the the dashboard screen gets populated and it shows that there are two pre-provisioned sites. If I just click that pre-provisioned tab, it shows me there are two projects in place. One is called BR1 and BR2, and they are pre-provisioned. There are no devices as such identified under those projects, and that's what we'll do now first. Uh, there are two ways to basically do PP, PNP. Uh, one is uh, by bootstrapping the router. So I have a router which uh, has a con I have a console connectivity to the router, and as long as it's uh, there is a reachability to the APKM, which I can just chest right away, and I have the reachability to him. Uh, what I will do is I'll bootstrap this router to go and uh, uh, talk to the PNP server on the APKM. So for that, you just need to enter a simple command called PNP profile. I'll just name this APKM and say transport HTTP IPv4 1.1.1.152 on port. 80. So this is uh, when you have access to the router and it has connectivity to the APKM. You can uh, uh, you can basically uh, bootstrap the router to use the PNP app and get uh, get the uh, you know, configurations uh, uploaded on the system. So let me just go go and quickly do that. Uh, so it takes about a minute or so to identify that uh, uh, th there is a PNP configuration that was inserted into the router and it goes and contacts the PNP server on the APKM. So we'll just wait uh, till the time it goes and um, contacts the APKM server. So as you can see, uh, the indication uh, that it has a successful communication is when you have a clock update. The APKM server here actually acts as the NTP server. And the moment you see that there is a, a system clock update, uh, you can be rest assured that uh, the PNP uh, agent has kicked in on the router and it is able to contact the PNP server agent that is running on the APKM. So let's go and quickly go to the dashboard again and just uh, refresh the dashboard. And you can see that there is a change in the unplanned devices. So there is a there is a uh, device which is in the unclaimed state. Uh, it shows the serial number of the device. It shows the IP of the device, and it also shows you the uh, product. Uh, in this case, I'm using a CSR router, and it shows me shows that the state is unclaimed. So you can go ahead and click this uh, router and 
what we can now do is uh, do a PNP configuration on this device and push certain configurations that I showed. Um, uh, so I'll just go and quickly select this router and I'll say claim. And in this, I will not upload any uh, image uh, on this router for now. Uh, we'll discuss this in the next uh, um, uh, next uh, router when we do an onboarding. Uh, from a config perspective, I'm going to push the PNP1 text which I showed to you earlier. And from a project perspective, I'll just move this to a something BR1. Device certificate is nothing but a sort of a, a self signed certificate uh, that gets a, a, a certificate that gets pushed to the device. Uh, APKM server acts as the PKI server in this case. So I'm just going to do a claim um, and just say OK. And you can see that the device has been claimed. Now I have a console uh, to the router and you can see that uh, the configurations are being pushed uh, to the device from APKM. So let's just wait uh, for a few minutes till the, all the configurations are complete and then we can see that uh, whatever configurations we had defined in the configuration file gets pushed to the device automatically. As you can see uh, earlier the prompt was router. Uh, the host name has changed to router1 and uh, I'll do a quickly show run and you can see that uh, whatever configurations was part of uh, the, uh, the configuration file gets pushed across along with the certificates because we checked the certificate. So we have the host names, we have the usernames that's been configured, um, we have the SNMP string that we, that we configured and all happened. NTP server becomes uh, the APKM server and all happens because of the PMP profile and this is the only configuration that we did as part of the bootstrap. We'll quickly go to the projects screen and we can see that BR1 should show this device and it says provisioned, right? So this was uh, this is one of the easiest methods to basically onboard a device, uh, especially in cases where you have remote branch office and you do have uh, very little IT presence or skilled presence across on the devices where you can uh, just ask them to power on and just do a bootstrap for the router and then all the configurations can be pushed from a central controller on the APKM. So let's go a little bit further and uh, automate the bootstrapping itself, right? So uh, uh, what we can do is rather than bootstrapping the router with a specific uh, PNP profile that we define, let's automate that as well. So for that, what we can do is uh, uh, we need to go, uh, uh, we need to define the PNP profile uh, as part of a DHCP scope. Uh, I'm going to quickly do that. Uh, so I will use one of my routers as my DHCP server. Sorry, I logged into a different router. And if you see, what I've done here is defined a PNP pool. Uh, I've defined a DSCP pool named PNP. Uh, the network is 60.60.60.0 slash 24. The default router and the leaf those are standard uh, things but what you can see here is basically an option 43 string right it's basically an ascii string uh, where you have i have mentioned this particular string if you uh, look closely in this string uh, the only thing that uh, constantly changes or will change based on your setup is this ip address this is the ip address of the apkm server uh, rest all the parameters will remain same and it's basically sort of a static configuration that you can do uh, just by changing the IP address to your APKM IP address. So what will happen is when, when a router boots up and as part of the DHCP it gets an IP address, uh, the DHCP server will also push an option uh, and tell, tell it um, that uh, the APKM server is located on 1.1.152 and the PNP process starts on, on its own. Um, so let's go and uh, first put some configurations uh, into, let's uh, uh, upload some configurations as well. Uh, so what I'll do is uh, rather than claiming the device, I will pre-provision the device uh, uh, well before. So I have a list of devices. So this is, this is my second device. I'm going to pre-provision the device. So let me add the device. I'll just say the device as RTR2. Uh, I'll say product IZ is CSR1000V. I'll put the serial number. So based on the serial number, I'll be able to push a certain configurations. So this is the serial number of the device. Um, I'll not push any image in this scenario. I'll just push uh, a new config. Um, I'll just upload the config from here, which is called PNP2. Uh, and I'll just say add. 
So now what will happen is uh, uh, rather than claiming the device after the PNP, it will basically look for the device with the serial number of 9, uh, 90Z and so on and then push the PNP2 configuration, especially when only when it sees the uh, serial number of the device. So I have the device, I have a console connection to the, this device. This device is already up and running. So what I'll do is I'll quickly erase the configuration of this device and reboot the device uh, to simulate a new uh, connection that is uh, uh, being established from the device and it's basically sort of a provisioning of a new device. Let me quickly reload it. Um, so I'm just going to uh, fast forward this video a little bit till the time the router reboots. So as you can see, um, the router is uh, nearly booted up and uh, the moment it boots up, you will find that uh, it's going to do a PNP and try to reach the PNP server and try to get the configurations. So let's just see that. So yes, the router is more or less booted up and you can now see that the PNP uh, agent on the router would kick in and it would basically start uh, trying to get those uh, configurations from the PNP. You can see that the PNP DHCP option 43 was received. Uh, and uh, if you just go ahead and just do a refresh of this. Go to VR2. It says getting a device info. So there is a communication between the device and the PNP configuration that you have done here based on the serial number of the device. Uh, so the device is getting updated. As you can see, the system clock got updated and it will slowly push the configuration that we had actually uh, configured here. That is the PNP2 configuration. So we'll do a refresh. Still getting the device info. Uh, in some time, it should be fully provisioned. Okay, now as you can see, the, the PNP configuration has started. Uh, the status of those uh, uh, messages can be seen here on the site. It's basically saying deploying config now. And within a few minutes, you'll find uh, that the PNP2 configuration that we had defined has been pushed onto the router. And this was completely zero touch. We didn't even had to bootstrap the router because the parameters of the PNP profile was passed on as part of option 43 on the DHCP. So let's just wait. Uh, the device comes up. It says provision, so let's go ahead and quickly check our device. Yes, uh, the host name of the device has been changed to router2. Uh, it's configured with a password now. And if you go and quickly see, I had actually defined a IP address on Gigabit Ethernet 2. That's also configured. Uh, this is the 60 dot IP address that got that it received as part of the DHCP. And if you quickly do a show run, it will have the certificate. We'll also have the SNMP strings that I put as part of the configuration. And you can see this PNP profile. I never defined this PNP profile and it was pushed as part of the DHCP and it configured this PNP profile on its own. Now it changes the port from port 80 to 443 for uh, secure reasons. So as you can see, this is very beneficial for any new device that's coming up uh, um, at a site, especially at a remote site where you have very little skilled IT presence, right? So let's take it a little bit further and onboard another device, uh, which is called, uh, uh, which is, uh, and also push uh, image uh, onto the device. So let's go ahead and add another device. So I have a third device. I'll take this device and I'll quickly show you the PNP can also push a configuration to the device. So let's call this RTR3. The product ID is still remains CSR1000V. The serial number of the device. And this time I'll just use this image, uh, which I had actually uploaded from the, on the images ta image tab. So I'm going to push this image across and I'm going to upload a new config to this. Uh, so what PNP does is it first uh, will upload the image onto the device and then it will push on the configurations. So I'll push a PNP3 config. I don't want to do any bootstraps. Let it have a device certificate and then I'm just going to do add. So it goes into a pending state. Uh, so I have a console to that router as well. Um, as you can see, um, I'll just quickly show you that it's the same router. If you see uh, the, the serial number, it's the same. And just to simulate that it's uh, it's a fresh router that's coming on the device, I'm going to erase the startup configurations and reload the router. So again, I'm going to uh, fast forward this video till the time the router reloads and then come back. So as you can see, the router is booted up and it will basically do a PNP again. It will get an IP address on the first interface and then it will receive the PNP profile from DHCP. Uh, it's receiving those PNP profiles as you can see. And then 
uh, it will basically start pushing the uh, iOS configurations onto the device. Let's quickly go and see the status here. Just do a refresh. It's still getting the device info. After after getting the device info, uh, it will basically start doing the PNP configurations. The set system clock uh, uh, tells you uh, system clock update tells you that there is a successful communication between the device and the PNP server. So just wait for a uh, wait for some time um, uh, till uh, the device uh, till the PNP server starts pushing up the iOS configurations on the device. So as you can see now, um, the status actually shows deploying image. Uh, so the image is getting deployed into the router, and once it boots, uh, you should be able to see that uh, on the console as well. So as you can see, uh, the image is getting deployed. Uh, it started deploying it from here. Uh, so the image deployment uh, takes a bit of time uh, because it's going to push the image, uh, which is of the order of around 350 odd MB. So I'm just going to quickly pause the video and come back once the image is uh, completely deployed onto the device. So the image has been successfully copied now, and you can see that it's uh, verifying the image. And now what it will do is basically set up the uh, the boot system files and uh, reboot the router again uh, to take for the iOS to take effect. So it's rebooting again. Uh, now it will reboot with uh, the new iOS. So as you can see, um, the route is completely booted now and uh, the configurations have been started uh, to be pushed from the Epic, uh, EMPNP server. I can see that the status has changed to deploying config. Uh, so now after the iOS has been upgraded, uh, the config is getting pushed. So we'll just wait till the time the status goes to provision and we can see that uh, whether the router has been provisioned as per our requirement. Yeah, it's provisioned. It's now it's provisioned. So let's go and quickly check the router. Yes, uh, the prompt has changed to RTR3. Uh, that was what defined and there's a password set. Um, now, if you look at the interfaces, we defined another interface, 10.10.53 uh, on the gigabit node. That's also has come. And if you look at the configuration now, you'll find that the boot system, boot flash, that's referring the new iOS image that was added by the PNP agent directly onto it. And rest all are the certificates, uh, the username password, the SNMP strings, and the PNP profile, which was again pushed from the DHCP option 43. Uh, thus, you can see uh, the PNP is a, a very useful app, especially for bringing up a new device and ensuring that you have compliant in terms of what iOS you need to push when the device comes up, uh, especially very, very useful in uh, remote branches where you have very lean IT presence or very uh, lean skilled uh, resources to uh, deploy the routers. And that concludes the video. Thank you for watching.